All right. Hello, hello. Hello. All right, we are live, guys. Welcome back. I got some uh In the background there, I got my I don't know if it's working. I think it's working. Some uh sound dampening uh because I, I don't think it's soundproofing but uh put some some foam sound dampening panels in the behind me there i don't know if you guys can see them oh yeah you can i can see them here in the the, the window but uh, hopefully that'll minimize the echo in here it's i noticed the streams are really echoey um, but anyways, I didn't get to the stream yesterday because I um I had a rough go at it uh, finishing my retapo on this guy and uh, packing the UVs. So I'll just show you what I got real quick. Um, well, first of all, uh, welcome everybody. Um, if you're just hopping into the stream or watching the the YouTube side of things, I've been working on this tiki for a while now. Uh, chip away at it on my spare time, about an hour, maybe sometimes two hours a day, depends. It's just a little personal project, uh, helping me get familiar with Blender 2.8. Um, and uh, this is where I'm at so far. Uh, I blocked it out in Blender 2.8, uh, sculpted the details in ZBrush, and then uh, did the retopology, UV packing, or you unwrapping and UV packing here in Blender. So let me show you where I'm at. Um, this is my low poly. Well. I wasn't really concerned with it being super low poly. This is kind of just um, uh, a, a personal challenge for myself. So it, I what I did was I did the retopology and then I subdivided it and I used the shrink wrap modifier to to really hug it to the surface of the high poly. Um, but it, I UV'd it before I did that, so it held my all my UVs and everything came out pretty clean. Um, yeah, it is a relatively dense mesh, but uh, I think that'll help maintain the details and stuff. Well, I know it will. Um, but the goal wasn't to make like a super low poly game asset or anything, it was just I mostly retopologized it so I could uh, have better control over the UVs. Because, um, let me uh, hide the low poly. Here's the, the high poly. Um, you can see I don't have these details up here in the top or the little skulls or the the little spirally thing in the, the eyes there. And over here we don't have the uh, little scales details in the back or in the chin but um yeah the i'll show you the high poly it's i decimated it in zbrush takes a minute it's a pretty dense mesh like that would be a nightmare to try to um unwrap you know what i mean so that's the main reason why I like to do a retopology. It's just so you just have a better control over it. And um, I broke the mesh into different parts. I have the main part, the tiki, the eyes. Then I have the teeth in two separate parts. That way when I bake them, the ones right next to each other don't, uh, their cages don't intersect. And then this last little 
these little bones down at the bottom. And let's hide all that. And I have the same corresponding parts for the uh, low poly. I have the tiki, the eyes, the teeth, A and B, and then I have the little bones. And I have everything uh, uh, with smooth shading. And I'm going to get ready to bring it into Marmoset tool bag for texture painting. I like to do, my, not painting, excuse me, texture baking. I like to bake in Marmoset. Uh, I feel like it's one of the easier software packages to use. Um, uh, I bought Marmoset a couple years ago. Actually, two years ago, I think. Whenever 3 came out. But anyways, um, I really like the baking features in it. I think it's uh, fast and powerful. But uh, before I bring it in there, let me save this guy. Um, it's always a good idea to triangulate your mesh. Where is that guy? Triangulate. Um, let's do beauty for both and then apply and you'll see here just triangulates the mesh for you and the reason you do this is so that when you bring it into other software packages um, for example Marmoset or like a game engine like Unity or Unreal they they will triangulate it automatically if, if it's not already triangulated. However, they might make the, the angles of the, the triangles be a little bit different. So in order to maintain consistency, you want to do it beforehand. <clears throat> and that way, That way it'll be fixed and whatever package you bring it into, the textures will main, uh, hold consistent. Okay, doke. Uh, let's see, let's deselect that and then we will box select all of them. And you can see here all the mesh icons are lit up or highlighted for the tiki low and I'll just do a f export as an FBX I did a couple tests real quick to make sure that the blender 2.8 exporter is working as intended and it is so I'll do this as my tiki low FBX that was my little tester right there always good uh, to do a little test and see we'll hide that and then we'll bring the high back up and we'll box select everything and another thing about a blender that you have to pay attention to is right here you can see it says so selected objects um, always make sure you check that to uh, only export what you have selected otherwise it'll try to export your entire uh, scene and it can take a really long time if that's not what you want okay tiki high fbx there's my first tester I'm gonna
I always like to double check and triple check things. Did I do that on the right one for the low? Let me do it one more time. Sorry, bear with me here. Export, FBX, Tiki Low, export. Okay. I do like that Alt A. It's nice to have like a definitive way of knowing that you've deselected everything. Um, at first I didn't like it, but now I do. Uh, let's see. Is that all I need to do from Blender's side of things? I think so. Okay, let me just save. It's still in beta, guys, so make sure you save often. Because um, it, it did crash a few times on me. It wasn't a, a, a terrible crash, but it definitely was not uh, convenient. Um, let's see, I'm going to get a different background. I tend to favor this one. And I'm just going to go with the color. All right. Um, for those of you not familiar with Marmoset Tool Bags Baking, it's pretty easy. I think personally it's one of the easiest one programs to bake in. Um, basically, you just click this loaf of bread icon, new baker, and it creates a bake group for you. And they have this quick load feature. You hit load. And this is kind of what makes it a little different than, um, say, Substance Painter. You select your Tiki High, your both your meshes, your high and your low, and import. And it just applies a default material to both, the high and the low. And the nice thing about it is, is it has this feature where you can see your cage, and you can see it's there all triangulated. And as long as nothing is sticking out, I'll show you what I mean. Um, let me just go ahead and as long as there's nothing sticking out of that cage, like there, uh, yes, let's see, Tiki, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's do an actual Marmoset folder. Tiki. Tiki bitmap. But basically, you just want to make sure you have your cage surrounding all of that. I did a little video uh, a while back, kind of going a little more in detail about it. Um, I'll put a link in the video uh, right about now. I'll make it pop up at the top or however you do that. Um, but if you want to check that out, if you're more, if you're curious how it actually works, I might have a little bit of an issue here. See how it's colliding? See if I can reel that in a little. I think it'll be fine. All right, let's go ahead and... So now that I did that, I just hide the uh, high poly, close the bones, drop down to the eyes. That looks fine. I'll just Sometimes you don't even need to adjust the cage, but it's nice to have that 
that visual feedback right off the bat. And last but not least, we have the Tiki. And he's looking good. I think we'll be fine. And the reason uh, you hide the high poly is so that uh, once you're done baking, it doesn't um, disrupt your view, you know, because the two meshes are right on top of each other and it's, you don't want to see them blending into each other. So I, I turned off the viewport for the high, or I turned off all the high polys in the viewport. And then you go back to your baker well, let's see, we can rename this just so it's a uh, Baker Tiki. That's the name of this Baker group. If you had a mesh or an object with multiple bake groups, it would be smart to name your groups, otherwise it'll just be Baker 1, Baker 2, and you can kind of lose track of things pretty quick there. So I'm just gonna do a quick bake at a, at a default setting. So let's just uh, go ahead and hit bake. And that was it. And that looks pretty good. Always a good idea to just do a test bake, see how things are working out. Now we can go ahead and uh, set everything how we really want it. I'm gonna do a 4K map. And let's see, we'll just do 16-bit channel. And I turn the samples up to 64. And for this, I want the object normals, curvature, ambient occlusion. And I also want vertex color for my ID map, thickness, and position. I think I need those because I'm going to make use of those in um, in Substance Painter, excuse me. I'll hit done and then I'll just position. Okay, so this might get a little buggy uh, while I render. So bear with me. Uh, the, the frame rate for my stream will probably drop a little bit. Um, but it usually doesn't take very long. So tangent. I'll just leave it at Marmoset. And then we'll just do bake. <clears throat> Go, go, go. Yeah, see, there it goes. It's definitely uh, pretty challenging on your system. Let me know if the audio seems any better at all. I'd be, I'm, I'm really curious. It, I don't know if it's just in my head, but it seems like it's not as echoey. Um, I mean, my other wall over on the other side of the room here is still bare, but hopefully it sounds a little better. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I mean, if, if you're watching this, you guys are probably in a similar boat as me where you're still just kind of learning as you go. Um, but if, if it's something that I can help you with or know the answer to, I'll do my best to, to help you out. Or if there's something I can do to, that you see me doing that could be done easier or better, uh, definitely let me know. I'm always, always trying to get better. You know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be coachable and teachable if you want to get better at this all right
That looks pretty darn good. Yeah, I really got those details. All right, so let's just check it out. And then uh, I didn't bake a roughness or a metal. I did do a cavity map. So let's see, let's throw that in there. Exaggerate that a little bit. And so the vertex color on just to make things interesting. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty good. So let's see, let me uh. Tiki bake. And the thing I like about Marmoset too is you can get such a you get your you can do feedback and uh iterate on it so quickly. Like if there's a problem, you can hop back in a blender almost right away and and get that solved. But uh, let's uh, open painter here. I miss the uh, the substance painter Black Friday sale. I wish I would have taken advantage of it. And now I'm running on the. Uh, I mean, I still have painter. That's what I love. One of the reasons I like it, but it's not the latest and greatest version. Let me go ahead and. Close Marmoset, and we'll hop in a painter here. File, new. Let's see, PBR Metal Rough Alpha test. A oh, PBR matter off with subsurface scattering. There we go. And I'm just going to go straight to 4K. And we're going to use OpenGL because that's what Marmoset bakes in, as well as uh, that's what what okay, what happened? Uh, Tiki. Where did I, did I put it in there? No. No, that was my test bakes. Where did I? Wait, oh no, I'm looking for maps, excuse me. So, I have to select my mesh first, hello. And I want the Tiki Lo. And now I want to add my bakes that I just did in Marmoset. Those are all these guys. And hopefully it should all uh, work out right. Let's see. If you bake your maps in a different program, 
you have to uh, apply them yourself. So there's the normal. See, that's the objects or world space. Got my ID map. Ambient occlusion. This should be my curvature. Position. And this should be thickness, thickness. All right. So what I'm thinking for this guy is I want to do a um, <clears throat> I want to have an emission in it also. There we go. So I'll just erase that. You know, just out of curiosity, let's see what it looks like with this on there. Oh. That looks nasty. Human wrist skin. <laughs> oh, all right. <clears throat> oh, fiberglass, that should look neat. Oh, that actually looks kind of cool. Bone stylized. Oh, that's kind of cool. That might actually be a good one to, uh, I kind of want to make it like jade. Give it like a like a jade look. Wow, how does that work? Let's see. I've never let's try this hull damage. Oops. Must be a heavy material, it's taking a while just to load. Huh. Uh. Oh, this is one you have to paint on, it doesn't... Uh... Oh, I like this. This looks fun. Ooh. Yeah. Disco, buddy. Disco Tiki. Damn, that's just too, uh...
so reflective. I wonder if I can just overlay that. Doesn't seem to do anything. I do call. Oh, uh, let's turn that on. Oh, there we go. Little too shiny. See what happens when I just turn the metal off. Why is my uh? Let's see what that looks like when we render it, shall we? Looks pretty good. Shader. See again. See translucent. Absorption color. I think I think I want to leave that at white. Oh, that looks pretty dope. Let me, uh, feel like this is could be toned down a little bit. See, that should be the curvature. Let me take a look at that. Curvature.
Woo. That's a little better. It's not as extreme with the emission. Although these bones are, since they're so thin, it's really affect the transmission or uh, subsurface is really affecting it. Let's see what that looks like. Let me uh, crank that up. Wow. Let's turn that on. And yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what else there is? Uh, It does kind of look like a uh, Wallace and Gromit smile. <clears throat> How you doing today?
Let's see. I'm going to make the background a little bit darker. I want it to be like a funky color too. Hello, welcome. Just trying to get a good look at my tiki guy here. How are you guys doing today? Thanks, it's, uh, it's worked out pretty well so far. Hey, what's happening? Yeah, I was thinking of doing wood, but, um, I wanted to like, I'm doing jade kind of because I want it to be like a really unusual tiki. <clears throat> like kind of like the backstory behind it is it's, it was a very unusual find for an archeologist or something, <clears throat> excuse me, to find a tiki that was carved from, from jade as opposed to wood because all tiki's are either wood or stone. So it's a very, uh, very puzzling find for this archeologist. <clears throat> At least that's my, my sort of story that I'm going with. <laughs> kind of like that angle right there. Let's uh, turn up the samples a little. Maybe 25. We'll do max time 30. Um, it's just a like a, a personal personal piece. I was using it to uh get familiar with Blender 2.8. Um. I did the block out in Blender 2.8, the retopology and the, the UV mapping and UV packing all in Blender 2.8. Um, <clears throat> for the most part, it was fun, but it there were a few points there where it was crashing a lot on me. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna kind of use it as a as a portfolio piece, I guess. You know, I mean. Mostly just uh, 3D is mostly just a hobby for me at the moment, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's just going to be like a little little piece to add to the portfolio that I'm slowly building. <laughs> Not that I really have anything to put in there. Yeah, I've been using 2.79 also for a while, but... You know, with 2.8 out and all the new features come in, I thought it'd be a good idea to start familiarizing myself with it. Um, and uh, so it's pretty good. I like it so far. If you haven't checked it out yet, I think uh, you'd like it. Let's see. Let me uh, save this guy. Let's see. Tiki. All right, just see. Tiki. Tiki. Render.
Let's see what happens when I crank this up. Oh, I don't like that. Try the bloom. Oh, there we go. That looks neat. Yeah, if you haven't tried 2.8, I definitely recommend it. It's um, it's really fun. Uh, just make sure you save your work a lot because it does crash. Um, and it's kind of weird because it's super random. Like it'll just be stable for hours, and all of a sudden you'll do something mundane like move your mesh and then it just crashes so but it's it's great so far yeah still in beta so the, it's definitely got uh, room for improvement let's do All right, I like that. Yeah, I didn't uh I didn't get online last night because I was UV mapping or unwrapping and packing this and it uh it took me a long time and I don't like the stream UV mapping or packing cuz it's super boring. I don't think anybody wants to watch you move UV islands around and scale them and rotate them and try to puzzle them in together but blender makes it pretty easy so you know what i want to try something real quick all right let's do a shot from the back Oh. Yeah, um I mostly just uh stream what I'm doing so that I can uh kind of go back and look to see what I did. Um and it helps me learn because uh like people interact with you sometimes and somebody will see something that you're not doing right or you could do better and people help you out um like i i'm not like a i don't say i stream to do i don't do tutorials really i mean i do like tips and tricks maybe but because i'm still learning this too uh but yeah, I mostly stream so I can interact with the community and get feedback and either get help or help people out. And it uh, works out pretty well so far. Damn. That's the floor plane. It keeps clipping. I think I can... Uh... Where is that visible from below? I think I can, now I can. But then I don't get the floor plane. Thanks. Yeah, it's it turned out pretty good. Let's see if we can get the light to be a little less. There we go.
Um, no, I, I don't use GIMP. I use, um, for a while there, I used uh, Krita. And um, I used to use Photoshop, but I don't like uh, the subscription model. So I bought um, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. And I use those to do like my photo and image editing. Uh, why do you bake? Oh. Why do, um, what do you mean? Why do I, I bake the maps out so that I can use them in different programs easier and get consistent textures. Like, uh, I have it here in substance painter, right? And pretty happy with how it turned out. So let's, uh, Let's just do a quick, let me uh, turn off the post effects. File, save as, Tiki Bake 2. All right, and now I can, whoops. Sorry, my, my hard drives are pretty slow. I need I need a new hard drive pretty desperately. I have all these old small hard drives. Well, not small, but uh, and. Oh wow, that sounds amazing. I'll definitely check it out. Let's see. Let's see, I want... Here we go. And... I'll just do 16. And I'll export those. It'll take a little bit because it's a, a 4K texture. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a good price. Okay, so now let's... Now we should be able to... Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, hop back in a blender here. And I think, let's see, compositing. Let's see, new. Oops. Tiki. And I got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Let's see, SP Bakes, Tiki Textures. Is that where I put them? Yeah, that's where I put them. Let me just make sure I exported that to the Tiki Bakes, Tiki Textures. Tiki... Tiki Textures, okay. There we go. Select all those guys. And for the most part, it hooks it all up for you. And hopefully it'll work. There it goes. Should be able to just apply that to all of it.
the heck? It's weird. Let's see. Why is it being so weird? It's like, let me, there we go. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be the little link that shows up over here. I'm not very active on it, to be honest. Um, when I started streaming, I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I basically just followed some tutorials on like what to do. And I didn't know what you had to and didn't have to do. So I just kind of followed the tutorials on how to set some things up. And I was like, I guess I have to hook my Twitter account up. So I did. And, but uh, I'm not that active on Twitter. I'm mostly on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and I'm starting to post my stuff on ArtStation. I, I'm going to edit this, my uh, pop out here um, to have my ArtStation. Uh, because I'm finally starting to have enough confidence to post stuff there. Uh, but yeah, that's but that's for another time. Yeah, Instagram's pretty cool so far. But this is why, uh, for who was asking why I bake the textures, now that I bake those textures in Substance Painter, I can use them here in uh in blender there are a couple of little quirks like i think let's see let's add a uh shader i need to add an emission and i need to add a texture image let's go ahead and plug that in there and then i need to see add this emissive texture and let me zoom in here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and let's see let's throw this into the vector so it knows where everything goes and I need to add a no a shader mix shader where is that guy there it is and i just pop that there that there and that there and i think that's right oh yep that's right whoa Now if we let's see what it looks like when I uh, hop in a full view here. This is um Eevee, by the way. That looks so good. Let me, uh, let's see, let's... This is the EV render engine. And... Let's see... Let me throw a light in here real quick. And let's see what it looks like in cycles, shall we? This is cycles. It's 
funny. I like how, I think it looks better in Eevee personally. You can kind of see my seam there. I should have done a better job with that, but. Okay. But yeah, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty consistent. It, uh, that's the main reason you bake textures is so that you can easily take your model from one program to another and get it to look the way you want right away. I mean, you could essentially uh, do this without making the textures in Substance Painter. You could build a node tree uh, here in the compositor and just kind of figure everything out with the built-in tools that Blender has and then the nice thing about that is you can quickly adjust it and change the colors and effects and stuff. Um, but regardless, like if you wanted to take that end result into Unity or Unreal 4, you still have to bake the, the textures out, whether it's in Substance Painter or in Blender. But to answer your question, yeah, the, the main reason I bake the textures is so that I can easily take my, my models in, from one program to another and have a consistent look. Ah, oh, all right. I'm so glad to have that finally textured. I'm going to um, mess around with it in the uh, in some uh, render settings uh, in both Marmoset Toolbag and in Blender and try to do some, some screen captures. Maybe do a little turnable, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I am so happy to finally have it textured. Um, now it's just time to take some nice screenshots and uh, set up a, a studio for it. All right, gang, I have to go and run and do some chores before work. Thanks for joining me, everybody who tuned in today. Um, I'm glad you guys uh, popped in to say hi, and uh, thanks for your feedback. Appreciate it. Definitely helps me make a uh, better choice and learn different things. I'll be back on Tuesday. Um, I'll have a studio lighting set up in here in Blender, and we'll uh, we'll mess around with that and do some uh, do some screenshots and maybe a, a quick little animated turntable for this guy all right gang you guys have a wonderful day i will see you on tuesday peace enjoy your weekend